today we're going to be filming a short video on how to make sure that you set up your computer correctly once you finish building it. It's telling us we have a new CPU and it's uh, new hardware detected, so we're going to press delete to enter our setup. Alright, so now we are in our BIOS. The first thing I like to do when I get into the BIOS, since every BIOS is a little different, is go through each and every screen and just make sure all the settings are what I would expect them to be and set up whatever I need to. So I'll go into our standard features first. Um, this will list the date, time, and uh, all the drives we have plugged in. First thing I notice that is that our date is incorrect, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Uh, let's see. Alright, so now our time's correct. Um, we have four hard drives, which you'd expect to see, and we see all of them, that's a good sign. Uh, and our two DVD drives, so that's all good. Just make sure everything else looks okay, so that all looks good. And we're going to go down to the next one now, our advanced features. Uh, first of all, we're going to come back to that because we're going to be setting up a, a RAID array. Um, since we're going to be installing our operating system, we're going to want to make sure our DVD drives are our first boot device because we need to boot from our DVD to install the OS. So I'm going to change that to our CD-ROM and change the second boot device back to the hard, hard disk. Uh, the rest of that is fine. I want my NumLock to start up and the rest of that's good. Down to integrated peripherals. If you have any uh, IRQs that you need to set up for a serial port, you generally don't need to mess with that. Um, our SATA mode is IDE, so I'm going to make sure I change this now to RAID, and the next time I reboot I'll be able to set up my RAID configuration. And our USB settings are just fine, all USB settings are enabled. On to power management. Uh, ACPI is what your computer uses when it goes into a standby mode. S3 is generally a good one to choose. Some people prefer S1 and S3. It basically determines uh, how far of a shutdown it goes into when you put it in sleep mode. All of that is fine. We're not going to have to mess with that because we're using standard settings for all our PCI cards. It's always good to uh, check out this screen when you've uh, first started up your computer. Make sure all your voltages and temperatures are okay. Uh, everything looks fine. We're running a st stock heat sink on a uh, 2.9 gigahertz processor, so about 37 degrees Celsius is very, very good. Frequency control. This is uh, what you're going to, to overclock. We're not going to overclock just now, but we'll probably do that a little bit later. Um, if we go into the memory, we want to make sure that our timings are correct. They look good for now, but we'll probably come back to that later when we're working on our overclocking. Check out our voltages. 1.5. You should check beforehand what voltage your memory uses. We checked before, before our memory uses 1.5 volts, so that's that what it needs to be. Sometimes if you set the voltage of memory too high or too low, it can make your system unstable. Alright, so we're all set. So I'm going to save and exit our BIOS now. Make sure I hit Y for yes. And the system's going to reboot. And now I'm going to want to go into our RAID configuration so we can set up our RAID 5 for our hard drives and go ahead and get our operating system installed. Alright, so we're going to hit Control i to go into our RAID configuration. The p particular RAID configuration that we're going to use in this system is we have four 1TB drives. We're going to set three of them into RAID 5, so we'll have a RAID 5 that will have a total of um, two terabytes with parity data, and then the, uh, the last 1TB drive will not be in RAID, it'll just be JBOT. So we're going to click on uh, Create a RAID vo create Volume, and we're going to select RAID 5, which is parity. We're going to select our disks, and we're going to use our first three disks here. Uh, hit enter to confirm and it's going to show the uh, the right amount which is about about two terabytes um, and we're going to go to create our volume so we're going to hit enter confirm that data will be lost if it's on there but these drives are empty so that's fine we're going to hit yes and you can now see that these three disks are member disks in volume zero and then our fourth disk is independent of those uh, and it is bootable which is of course what we need so we are going to exit this now Yes. So this is just loading all the hardware in the system. It's currently looking at CD. It sees that there's a CD in the drive. And because we have it set as a default, it's going to boot into the Windows, uh, the Windows operating system installer now. Another thing you have to keep in mind is if you are doing a uh, RAID setup like we are, and you want to install Windows onto a RAID configuration, you're going to need drivers usually for you, your uh, RAID controller on your motherboard uh, for during the Windows installation. Sometimes it, Windows detects it automatically, sometimes it'll ask you for a driver disk, so you just have to be prepared. Usually you just use the disk that came with your motherboard and that'll take care of what you need. Alright, and it looks like it's automatically detected our RAID array, or RAID array so we won't have to load our driver. You can see it's a, a full size there, about two, two terabytes. 
Um, so we're all set. So we are just going to go to our drive options, make sure everything looks like what we want. Um, and we are going to uh, partition this drive into a few parts. So uh, we're just going to... That's just the setup we're going to use. You might just want to use one gigantic partition. Just bear in mind that Windows will only support partitions up to 2 terabytes. So um, if you do have a partition that's bigger than that, you're going to have to size it down. So we're just going to make a few um, partitions here. All right, so our first partition is going to be 250 gigabytes. This is what we're going to install our operating system onto. So that's in megabytes, so 250,000 megabytes, 250 gigabytes. We're going to apply that, make that our first partition. Okay, our next partition is going to be uh, 500 gigabytes. So we're going to go ahead and make sure you're doing this in the, your unallocated space. So we're going to make it 100 gigabytes. All right, and, and so the remainder of our space, we're just going to make one big partition. So we're going to partition what's left. It should automatically select all of it. We're going to hit apply. So uh, even though we're not using our fourth one terabyte drive to load the operating system onto, while we're here and it's convenient, we're just going to set up our partition on it because the drive needs to be partitioned for us to use it. You can also just do this later in Windows. It's no different. So we, all, we will set up our partition. Okay, and we're going to be loading our OS on our first 250 gigabyte partition on our RAID array. So we'll hit next. And it's going to start installing Windows. All right, so the Windows installation is just finished and the computer is now rebooting as it should. All right, so we're uh, on our login screen for the first time and we're going to go ahead and log in. You'll notice the resolution is very big. That's because our graphics card driver is not yet installed. So we're going to go into our device manager. Okay, so you can see we need to install our network interface. Um, and all these are just basically going to be our chipset drivers that uh, come with our motherboard. So other than that, we're fine. But as I mentioned, um, we're going to want to replace the graphics card driver with NVIDIA's one so that we can actually get a good resolution and good performance. All right, and so there's a bunch of things we want to install here. Uh, we're first, the first thing we're going to do is install our drivers. We're also going to want to install this to help us with our overclocking. We need the in Intel Matrix Storage Manager because we're running a RAID, ar RAID array and we want to be able to monitor it. Uh, this will tell us if there's any uh, issues that come up in the, in the array. So it's good to install. You only need to install it if you have RAID though. Okay, so we'll start with our drivers. And our chipset first. Alright, so our chipset has finished installing. We're going to proceed to the next step. Um, we can go ahead and restart the computer after we finished reinstalling. Uh, after we finished installing all the drivers, so just make things faster later. Uh, let's get our audio driver installed. All right. While it's going, uh, a lot of people find user account control very annoying. It's that little thing that pops up and um, tells you to allow access, administrator access. So we're going to go ahead and uh, and disable that. We're going to go to the classic view in our control panel. Go down to user accounts. And we're going to turn user account control on or off for our user account. Hit continue. Turn it off. Hit OK. And we'll let it restart. And once it restarts, it'll stop, it'll stop telling us that. But now it's going to give us an annoying little bubble in the bottom. So we're going to go tell it to stop giving us that bubble that user account control is turned off. So to do that, we're going to go back into our control panel. And we're going to go to our security center. Change the way it alerts us and tell it not to display an annoying icon that user account control is turned off. And we will be all set with that. We have finished downloading our drivers for our video card and we're just going to go ahead and run those. It's still coming up because we haven't restarted the computer yet. Uh, it's completely normal if you notice some screen flicker or if your screen goes black during this process. All right, so the driver installation is finished, and now that we've finished installing all our drivers, we'll just let it restart this time. And uh, after your computer restarts, you're going to want to go back to Device Manager, make sure everything's installed, all the stuff is in there, and you're going to want to rerun that uh, Windows evaluation tool.